Remember when passwords were an absolute pain in the backside? Maybe they still are for you, in which case I'd urge you to continue watching this video. There's no getting away from the fact that we all need a multitude of passwords to get stuff done these days. And that would be fine if we weren't asked to devise a different combination of letters, numbers, special characters, and all sorts of other stuff for every single point of access. Throw in two-factor authentication and what often feels like lots of needless login requests, hello Adobe Reader, and it's all a bit of a hot mess, as they say on the internet. Today, I'm gonna to explain how I switched from Keychain to 1Password, which is today's sponsor, and why it's made such a massive difference to everything I do. And a quick one before we get started, I've recently discovered that just 10% of people who watch this channel are subscribed, yet lots of people keep coming back for more. So if you haven't subscribed, I would love it if you wouldn't mind just hitting the subscribe button, hitting the bell as well if you don't mind, that way you'll never miss an episode. There are several topics for which I create content on the internet that bring out the most depressingly miserable comments from people who can't see past their own nose. Take headphones, for example. Trust me, if you get into the content creation game and choose the tech niche like I have, get ready to encounter what I call the headphone massive. And you'll encounter them if you dare provide a favorable opinion on one of the brands that they don't like. There's the obvious ones too, you know, Apple versus Android, Apple versus Windows, Apple versus Linux, don't pronounce that wrong. And then there's password managers. Now, this one took me by surprise. It's not the sexiest topic after all, but my word, are there some staunch fans out there of particular platforms. Some, in fact, most are absolutely lovely. They'll have their own favorite method of securing all of their digital stuff, and they'll politely tell me about it. Others, I'm afraid, are complete clowns. They'll accuse me of misinforming my audience or tell me to take down a video and remake it with the correct information. I kid you not, someone suggested that I should do that based on my previous password manager shootout. And they do this if I don't mention their favorite password manager. But let me confirm this once and for all. There are many, many options out there for password management, which range from keeping everything in your head to widely used, privately owned, VC funded platforms. But this is why the world and the internet is such a wonderful place. You have choice. And this particular choice is about as personal as it gets, given the nature of the data being stored. But I do have my favorite, and it has changed the game for me big time. I'd been aware of 1Password for quite a while. In fact, I tried it many, many years ago. But I always returned it to Keychain simply because the only stuff that I used back then really was Apple gear. So I decided to give 1Password another go and boy have I been missing out. The good news is that switching from Keychain to 1Password is actually pretty straightforward. As you would expect, 1Password has created a guide for this, but I actually opted to do it manually. And the way that I did that, I just started with a completely blank 1Password database and added login details to it as I went along. And this has resulted in a completely clean vault of passwords in 1Password, rather than bring across all of the stuff that I had in Keychain, a lot of which was just old and useless. Now, full disclosure, I do work closely with 1Password now. They are sponsoring this video, but the reason for this burgeoning friendship is quite simple and a little bit surprising. There's a huge irony to this though, because I initially came into close contact with 1Password following a blog post I wrote in 2021, which was titled, The 1Password Disaster and Two Brilliant 1Password Alternatives. That piece led me to a brief exchange on Twitter with one of the co-founders, followed by an interview, which I'll link to above, and, Consequently, it just gave me a much better understanding of what's going on behind the scenes at 1Password. I just love it when there's more to a piece of software than the bits and bytes, and 1Password's response to my initial article, which, you know, sparked quite a bit of conversation on Medium, just speaks volumes about what they're like as a company. You might be wondering how I use 1Password, and I am not a 1Password power user. I use it at its most kind of base level form, which is to store login details, credit card information, and my confidential notes. I throw the odd software license in there, and I've made sure my passport details and driving license are kind of secure in the vault, but I don't go much further than that. This is the great thing about 1Password. You can use it to any degree you see fit. So if you fancy going further and using some of their integrations like Fastmail, you can do that. If you're running a business, you can basically set up a vault that can be shared across the entire company. If you have a family and you want everyone to kind of adhere to the same cybersecurity, you can use the brilliant families plan. But for me, 1Password is just a great password manager that works cross-platform. So whether I'm setting up a new Mac, switching phones, or revisiting Windows, it's always there for me immediately. 
I've been using the beta version of 1Password 8 for the Mac for a little while now, and I absolutely love it. There are two things to cover off straight away though. The first one is the switch to a subscription only model for 1Password 8, which hasn't gone down particularly well with certain sections of their user base. Now, subscription models will always be divisive, particularly when they're implemented by software developers who have offered one-time purchase options for many years. Personally, I have no qualms with this. Having worked within the software industry for nearly two decades myself, I know how hard and necessary those choices are behind the scenes. In fact, I lost most of my hair while transitioning an on-premise platform to a SaaS subscription model. That wasn't fun. It's also why some of the toughest decisions in tech are also the bravest. The next thing to cover very quickly is Electron, and this is where I need to put my hands up, I'm afraid, because as my Twitter bio states, I'm the least tech tech reviewer out there. I didn't even know Electron existed. I didn't know it was a thing, let alone what it was for. In its crudest form, it's a quick and dirty way of turning a web app into a macOS app. So for instance, Discord, Teams, there's lots of examples of Electron apps where they've taken the web app and just quickly, well, relatively quickly, turned it into a macOS app. Now, I can't speak for one password on this because I'm not smart enough, but they use Electron in a slightly different way. In fact, they refer to their use of Electron as hybrid in that they're still using the Rust programming language behind the scenes, but they bundle that with TypeScript, React, and then kind of wrap it all in Electron. What matters though, as always, is how this relates to real world usage. That's all I care about. So the primary concern over the use of Electron in 1Password 8 related to resource management and the impact that might have on battery life if you're using 1Password 8 on a MacBook. I've been using 1Password 8 exclusively on my M1 MacBook Air for the last few weeks, and I'm happy to confirm that there's been no measurable impact on performance or battery life. As has always been the case with 1Password, you don't know it's there until you need it. In fact, if I'd never heard about the Electron thing, I'd never have thought twice about this. It's just a complete non-event. So with that out of the way, we can finally enjoy some of the changes that have been made in 1Password 8. The new design, for instance, is just fantastic. It's been fully refreshed, it's been tidied up, and everything just seems to be in a very convenient place. Just the presence of the categories dropdown at the top of the user interface, for instance, makes for a much more pleasurable experience. There's better universal search. There's a new generation of the brilliant watchtower feature. Editing new items and editing existing items in your vault is just more convenient and more contextual you can unlock via Apple Watch as well, which is something I use all of the time when my MacBook Pro is in clamshell mode. But the icing on the cake for Mac users is a brand new feature called Universal Autofill. And the way it works is super simple, but super convenient. So it works just as you would expect the 1Password integration with Safari or Chrome to work, where it will automatically fill in your username and password for a website or a, a web app. It does the exact same thing now in the Mac OS operating system. So if you have your system preferences ask you for a password or any kind of native macOS app, you can once again grab those username and password details from 1Password with a very simple shortcut on the keyboard. You don't have to go into 1Password and do the copy paste thing that we currently do at the moment with 1Password 7. It's so, so useful. Now, as I've said numerous times, I can't tell you which password manager is right for you, but I can tell you what works for me. As always, the magic happens in the comments. It's where I learn, it's where my audience learns. And if you want to add to this conversation with your own thoughts about your own favorite password manager, the floor is yours. Go. If you've still got some time and you'd like to check out what I think about some other password managers, keep watching for a link to my full password manager guide. Until next time, guys, thank you so much for watching this video and I'll catch you next time.